right guys, here we are with video number two explaining the still in true power, true cold air intake for the Toyota Tundra. Uh, what we're doing right now is we're actually driving on the same route that we were driving when we did our intake air temperature consistency testing. And uh, I'm just gonna talk a little bit about what we experienced and why it's important. Basically, what we saw is a baseline average horsepower output of about 325 horsepower from the factory and 325 foot-pounds of torque. Um, we did see uh, some numbers lower than that. We saw some numbers higher than that, but that's about the average was 325 on both. Um, from there, with the competitor intake that we tested, we saw about 335 horsepower uh, on average with that port open. So they did see an increase in power. Um, and then we also saw 340 horsepower with the still an intake. So that's why we've really been focused so much on maintaining those consistent intake air temperatures. Uh, the dyno will tell you kind of your best case scenario. Hey, if you have, you know, your optimum scenario of peak intake air temperatures, uh, or sorry, I should say optimized intake air temperatures, um, you know, good consistent water uh, coolant temperatures and everything really the way that it should ideally be. And it gives you a good consistent uh, measurement to, to get averages off of, but it does not give you the true real world uh, sitting in traffic, sitting at the staging lights of the drag strip, sitting at camp before you go out off-roading, whatever it may be, it doesn't replicate that scenario for you. That's why, you know, we did our dyno testing, we got the numbers, but really most importantly for us was intake air temperature. So I went ahead and I drew up this quick diagram. And the idea there is to actually physically show you that a larger, hotter air molecule is going to take up more space inside of the same box as a colder, more oxygen-rich air molecule. This is to represent your intake air box. Your intake air box, your intake tube, your throttle body, they're all a given size. That box is not going to change. It's not going to increase. It's not going to decrease. We can improve the flow of it. By, by adding extra ports to it, by changing the shape a little bit. However, we're not gonna change the volume of air that we're dealing with. So our goal is to reduce that temperature, hence the term cold air intake. And the whole reason for that is because the coldest air that we can possibly get into the engine is the best. Cold air means that your air molecules are smaller and therefore more dense, and that's your air density. We're trying to get that oxygen-rich, dense air into your engine so that we get a better burn, which equals more power and more torque. The factory ECU, your computer inside, is measuring multiple different points of data on your vehicle. It's measuring your exhaust gas temperature, it's measuring your, your exhaust air fuel ratio, it's measuring the intake temperature, it's measuring the ambient air temperature. And because of that, it's constantly adjusting your vehicle's performance. If your water temperature, for example, is starting to run too hot, if your intake air temperature is starting to run too hot, if any of these things start to get out of line of what is expected for the computer, the computer starts to adjust the tune. Because if it knows that your water temperature is too high, your intake air temperature is too high, it can't be as aggressive with its timing, with the, its ignition input. So it'll start to pull a little bit of timing. It'll start to adjust the air fuel ratio. So. The reason why we really wanted to focus on maintaining that good, consistent, low intake air temperature is so that the vehicle would be constantly giving the best performance that it can. So the unique thing about the true power intake and the way that it works so well is that we're taking unused frontal area of the radiator shroud um, and we are redirecting that air into the air intake. So what we've done is we've incorporated the uh, cold air ducting to make sure that that additional air flow that we're bringing into the air box is as cold or as low of a temperature as it can possibly be. During the test, uh, this is where we saw the 102 or 104 degree intake air temperatures, 125 on the competitor intake. Um, and now we're starting to go again. 
And it was at this point that we immediately started to see the intake air temperatures decline with the still and true power cold air intake. The OEM intake uh, didn't decline for about a minute and 45 seconds uh, at accelerating to freeway speeds. The still and intake declined to ambient air temperature within 35 seconds. The benefits with the True Power by Stillen cold air intake system is you're getting an intake that's proven to increase your horsepower, increase your torque, lower your intake air temperatures, improve your airflow, and is backed by a limited lifetime warranty, and is made in America.